So this is lesson 1-3, which is piecewise defined functions. Our essential question is how do you model a situation in which a function behaves differently over different parts of its domain? So if we're talking about real life situations, most situations don't fall into one type of graph. So, so like everything isn't linear or quadratic or um, cubic or absolute value. So a piecewise allows us to fit different situations for different circumstances. Okay, so our first example is that Alani has a summer job as a lifeguard. She makes $8 an hour for up to 40 hours each week. If she works more than 40 hours, she makes one and a half times her hourly pay or $12 an hour for each hour over 40 hours. How could you make a graph and write a function that shows Alani's weekly earnings based on the number of hours she works? Okay, so we can say, we can write a function. So this is what a piecewise function is going to look like. So we can say that Alani earns $8 an hour. So we're going to say 8x when x is between. So we know it needs to be bigger than or equal to 0, but also less than or equal to 40. So up to 40 40 hours, that represents our function. But then after that, we know that she's going to make $12 an hour. But the thing is, is we have to subtract out what, um, what she would make for the, for the first 40 hours. So what we want to think about here, I'm going to write this down here, is it's 12 times the number of hours minus 40. So that's accounting for, these are every hour after 40. So if it was 41 hours, we know that'd be $12 for the 41st hour, okay? So if we multiply this out here, we get 12x minus 160. So we can write that as our function. And that is true when x is greater than 40, okay? So now we're going to sketch that graph. Okay, so I'm going to go by, let's go by 20s, 20, 40, 60, 80 down here. And then we're going to go by hundreds. So this would be 200, 400, 600, 800. So this is talking about pay, so money, and this is talking about Hours. Okay, so we can figure this out. We know that if she works zero hours, we're going to talk about the top equation because that's where zero is. So she makes work zero hours, she makes zero money. So we're going to put a dot at zero, zero. Okay, so then we can start plugging in some numbers here. 20 hours we know is going to be the top equation as well because it's between zero and 40. So 20 times 8 is going to give us 160. So 20 hours, we're going to go up to right about there, let's say 160, okay? Then let's figure out 40 because that's the changing point. So if I plug in 40 hours, I'm still using the top equation because of that symbol right there. That's or equals to where that's just greater than. So if, it's, if she works exactly 40 hours, we're still using the top equation. So 40 hours times 8 is going to give us 320. So we're going to go to 40. We're going to estimate what 320 would look like. I'm coloring in the dot because we know it's or equal to. So that is the first equation right there. And it has endpoints because we have the restriction from 0 to 40. Okay, so now let's say, um, let's plug in 60. So if I plug in 60 to the bottom equation now, it would be 12 times 60 minus 160, and that would give me 560. So I'm going to go up here to 560. Estimate where that would be. Okay, and then I'm going to plug in 80. So if I plug in 80, 12 times 80 minus 160 is going to give me 800. 
and then I can connect these. So it's very, very subtle and kind of hard to see, but you'll notice that the second piece of my graph, this piece right here, has a steeper slope, which makes sense because we know that that slope is 12, where the first leg of the graph only has a slope of 8. So this is an example of a piecewise function that explains different things for different x values. Okay? Example two is we are going to now graph a piecewise function. Okay? So I'm going to get my graph set up over here to the right. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to use color because I think color helps sometimes. Okay? So, um... On my graph, let's see, I'm going to go by, let's go by twos. So this would be 4, 8, 12. And let's do the same. No, let's do, so I'm going to try to be consistent with what I did in the written notes. Okay, so on the x-axis, I went by fours. I'm going to erase those because... That's not great. Okay. And then on the y-axis, I'm going by sixes. Okay. Well, I'm actually going by threes, but I'm just going to mark the sixes. Okay. So for this first one, let's use a color. So let's make this green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative 10, and I'm going to plug it into to the x right here. Right there. So I'm going to write this down here. This is going to be 4 times negative 10 plus 11. And I am going to get negative 29. Okay, then I'm going to take the negative 2, and I'm also going to plug it in right here. So 4 times negative 2 plus 11 is going to be 3. So these are my endpoints. And this, I can tell, is linear, so all I need to do is find the two endpoints, and I'm good. So my input on the first one was negative 10, and my output was negative 29. And then on the second one, my input was negative 2, and my output was 3. And I look right here to tell me if it's going to be a closed dot or an open dot. So when it's or equal to, that means it's gonna, I'm going to color the dot in. So my first dot is at negative 10, so I can estimate, I know that's 4, and that's 8. So 10 is going to be right here, and then I'm going to go 29, so that's 6, 12, 18. So right about down here, okay? And I'm going to color that in. Okay, and then my other dot is at negative 2, 3. So I know it's right here, and that one is going to be an open circle at negative 2, 3. So then I'm going to connect those because I know that this is a straight line. So if it's not a line, I might have to put more dots in, and that's what I'm going to do on the next example here. Okay, so let's change this to red. So for the red one, we're going to... Start with, let's plug in negative 2. So we're going to do negative 2 squared minus 1. And we get 3. So that means our starting point is at negative 2, 3. And you'll notice that is the same point that we had for the last one here. So that just means, and this is or equal to, so it just means we're going to color in that dot that we just had put a circle around. Okay, now because this is quadratic, I know it's not going to be just a straight line. So I'm going to plug in another point, not just negative 2 and 2. Let's plug in 0. So let's plug 0 squared minus 1. It's going to be negative 1. So 0, 1. I picked 0 because it was directly between negative 2 and 2. So if I plug in 0, I get oops, negative 1. So it's going to be about here. Okay, and then I'm going to plug in the 2 over here. So this is going to be 2 squared minus 1, which is 3. So positive 2, 3 is my next point. And this one is or equal to, so I'm going to color it in. 
And this is quadratic, so I know it's going to look kind of curved in between those three points there. Okay, so now my last one, let's go with a third color. It's going to be blue, so I'm going to plug in 2 over here. So this is going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. So that's 2, 3. And, oops. 10 plus 1, which is 11. So 10, 11. Okay, so this one is not or equal to, and it's the same point as in the last example, except I'm not good at drawing on here. Okay, so I'm going to try to outline that. You can tell I'm outlining that. And then I want to go to the point 10, 11, which is probably right about there. This one is or equal to, so I'm going to color it in, and then I connect those. So that is my piecewise graph. So then it says, what's the domain and range? So domain for this would be, we can look our furthest to the left point is negative 10. So this would be, and I'm going to use square brackets because it can be negative 10. And every dot is colored in, so I don't have any open circles in between. And my furthest to the right point is 10. Because we just give our x values. And our range would be negative 29 to 11. Okay? Intervals of increasing and decreasing. So increasing would be from... negative 10 to negative 2, and from 2 to 10, and then we can use different color. Decreasing would be from negative 2 to 2. Oh, I missed one. Negative 2 to 0. Whoops. Negative 2 to 0 would be decreasing. And then let's change this here. It'd be 0 to 10 is increasing. Okay? So that is piecewise defined functions, kind of complicated graphs. So if you need me to walk through additional examples, just let me know. Okay, and our next one, example four, is to write a rule for an absolute value function. So we can think of absolute value as a piecewise function. So if we look at this, we have, let's see, so we have f of x equals 6 times x plus 3. So all I'm doing is factoring out a 6 from this. This is going to tell us where our vertex is. So our vertex is going to be at negative 3. And there's no number on the outside here, so it's just going to be negative 3, 0. So what that means is that right here, that's because I can factor out a 6, so I can find out that, um, that horizontal shift that we learned about in the last lesson. Okay, So what this means is that this is going to be our um, piecewise function. So we know that our slope, this right there is going to tell us our slope. So we know that it's going to go up this way and down that way. So we're going to have half of our function, half of our piecewise, is going to have an increasing slope, and half is going to have a decreasing slope. So we can say this piece, so if I color code this again, so this part right here we know has a negative slope. So that's going to be our negative 6x. And then if we think about it, so if we think back to our original function, we're either going to have plus 18 or minus 18. And if you extend that graph down, that green line down, it's going to hit at negative 18. And that's going to be true when x is less than negative 3. And then let's use different color here. So this side right here is going to be a positive 6x, and we can tell that if we extend the graph, it's going to hit at positive 18, and that is going to be when x is greater than or equal to negative 3. The question might be, 
which inequality, which one should be or equal to, and which one should just be greater than or less than. And it doesn't matter. As long as one is greater than or equal to, and or one is or equal to, and one is not, then that accounts for the function having only one value at that point. Okay? Okay, so here's our last example, and this is talking about step functions. Okay, so step functions are what happens when we have one value and then jump up to the next. So it's not, not like a linear function, but like this example right here. It says the shipping cost of items purchased from an online store is dependent on the weight of the items. The table below represents shipping costs based on the weight. So graph the function. What are the domain and range of the function and what are the maximum and minimum values? So you'll see that if I have a two pound um, package that I'm shipping, it's gonna cost me $5. But if I have a 2.1 pound package, it's gonna cost me $8. So it's not a linear function in that it's gonna cost me increments between five and eight, it jumps up to the next price, okay? So if we are to graph this, so I'm gonna make this two, four, six, eight. So this is going to be our weight. And then we're gonna go by 5, 10, 15. So this is going to be your cost or your money. Okay, so it says that from 0 to 2 pounds, it costs $5. So open circle on 0 and closed circle on 2, and we have a horizontal line. And then from 2 to 4, it's going to cost 8. So we're going to say 2 four, it's going to cost eight, and then four to six, it's going to cost 11, and then six to eight, it's going to cost 14. So you can see the reason that this is called a step function, it looks like steps, okay? So Step function is just another function to know that it's out there. It describes certain, a lot of real life situations. Okay, so it asks us for the domain. So let's practice on the last, last one we did the domain in interval notation. Let's do this one in set builder notation. So X is between, so you can see if we're looking at the X values, it actually hits every X because where this one's colored in, this one's not. So it takes, it's a continuous thing because 2.1 is accounted for, 4.5 is accounted for. So the decimals in between, every x value is covered. So we can say x is less than or is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 8. So that's the domain. My range is a little bit different. So the range, I can't have a package that is going to cost me $5.60 to send. It's either going to cost me $5 or $8 or 11 or 14. So because it steps and jumps between those numbers, I just list those. So I say 5, 8, 11, 14. There we go. So and then the minimum we know is 5 and the maximum is 14. Okay, so that is step functions.